This is shot on a less than $200 full-frame autofocus lens. Impressive, huh? And what if we compare it to $1000 more expensive lens? Mica 85mm f1.8 versus Zeiss Bodies 85mm f1.8. Let's go! So guys, let's start off with the size and weight of these lenses. Zeiss Bodies weighs only 452 grams, whereas Mica weighs only 420 grams, so a bit lighter. In terms of size, they're almost identical, Mica is a bit taller and Zeiss is a little bit fatter. But overall, those two lenses feel and operate like the same weight and size. The build quality, materials and weather sealing. Mica does feel very cheap and plasticky, just have a listen. And the same applies to the lens hood, it's quite deep by the way. But at least the lens mount is made out of metal. And of course it has no weather sealing. Mica lens does have a very nice and responsive focus ring, no complaints here, and also the AF-MF switch. And a micro USB port for future updates. Zeiss Bodies, on the other hand, is built like a tank. The fit and finish is outstanding and also it looks nice, in my opinion. I've been using the Zeiss lens for more than 6 years now and as you can see, it's still in a very nice condition. It has weather sealing with a cool blue gasket near the metal lens mount, smooth focus ring and even a built-in screen. You don't see that too often, right? The filter thread size on both lenses is 67mm, which is very convenient, I have a ton of 67mm lenses and filters, so it's a thumbs up here. So now let's talk about autofocus. Micro lens does feature autofocus and as you can see, it tracks the subject pretty well. And also it's lightning fast as you can see right here, but it hunts a little bit just before it hits the focus, keep that in mind. Comparing two lenses side by side, you can see that Mica is a little bit slower and also it hunts for the focus while it's refocusing, whereas the Zeiss Bettis just hits the focus spot on all the time. But overall guys, for the lens which is less than $200, this autofocus performance is more than good. I want to thank my daughter Xusha for being a great model for this shoot, thumbs up for her, she's running towards the lens, both lenses show great performance here. And here is the screen recording of Michael lens at f1.8 and as you can see it catches the eye and works properly. But when the scene is a little busier, the chain is in front of my daughter and sometimes Michael Lenz just catches this chain before it catches the eye of my daughter. So the baddest wins in this category. Also Taste Bodies features the optical image stabilization built into the lens, which is nice, but to be honest guys, I don't see a real difference. Here's the steady shot active and the previous shot with the swings was also shot handheld with steady shot standard, it's almost no difference. So now let's have a look at the image quality, distortion and vignette. At f1.8 it does have some vignette, it gets much better by f2 and almost goes away by f2.2, f2.8. In terms of distortion, it's also pretty good, we see a slight pincushion distortion, which is good for portrait shots, because people tend to look slimmer with such distortion. And also you can clearly see the vignette with false color tool of your monitor. At f1.8 it's quite big and by f2.5 it's almost gone. And here is the corner sharpness of this lens, at f1.8 it's quite soft and it really sharpens up only by f4, but the corner sharpness of 85mm lens is not that much important in my opinion, because you'll be using this lens mostly for portrait shots. And here is the chart in terms of vignette, the corners are brightening up as you stop down the lens. In terms of center sharpness, it's pretty good throughout the range, but here is the main problem of this lens, the chromatic aberrations on those white squares. And as you can see, only by f2.8 we do get no purple fringing. 
So if you have some contrasting edges in your shot, contrasty objects, please step down your lens to at least f2.8. And here is the comparison between those two lenses. They have a little bit different uh, focal length in my opinion, because the Mica feels like a bit tighter lens and the Zeiss is a bit wider. Maybe Zeiss is 85 and Mica is like 87 millimeters probably, because it was on the tripod with the same position, exactly same position. Better contrast on the Zeiss lens, but also it feels like the corners are also a bit darker on the Zeiss, which is impressive. And in terms of distortion, the Zeiss is a bit better here as well. When we zoom in, we do see a very good sharpness. It looks like the Mica is even sharper, but those chromatic aberrations really make the difference. The Zeiss doesn't have those even at f1.8. And having a look at the corner sharpness, we see a better contrast on the Zeiss lens and also it's much sharper in the corners. But also it feels like Zeiss does have more vignette at f1.8. By f2.8 those look kind of identical, only the contrast is better on the Zeiss lens. And here is what you can get with the Mica lens at f1.8 during daytime. We do see some chromatic aberrations, but nothing too crazy. And now let's talk about chromatic aberrations. At f1.8, Mica lens shows a lot of those, so you gotta be very careful with those. At f2.2, they are still apparent. It's much better at f2.8 and it almost disappears at f4. And when we compare it to Zeiss lens, as you can see at f1.8, it shows almost no chromatic aberrations and this is why this lens is that much more expensive. And now let's talk flares. The Mica lens does have one spot when it really gets messy and, uh, you know, not really usable in terms of flares at f1.8. Zeiss Baddies does show also pretty big flare, to be honest, but the Mica lens just, um, you know, doing not the best job when the sun is kind of out of frame a little bit. And that is why the lens hood is that deep on this lens. Look at that. It's just, you know, it's, it's a huge light leak. By f8 you can see some more flaring on the Zeiss lens, but also we do have this little spot when the Mica lens just, you know, ruins the shot, so you gotta be really careful. And here is how it looks at f22, pretty nice sun star, and once again, look at that light leak right here. One, two, three, here it is, it's just, oh man, <laughs> gotta be really careful with this lens. And here is the shot with the lens hood. Yeah, we do still get this light leak and loss of contrast, but it's not that big. It's not that, you know, it's not ruining the shot completely at least. So use the lens hood, please. And here it is in the real world uh, usage. The sun somewhere at the top left corner and we still get pretty nice picture. We do get a little bit of uh, less contrast on the top of the frame in this shot but also it's more than usable and I didn't use the lens hood in this shot. So it's just a specific spot when you do get this huge light leak. And now let's talk the minimal focusing distance. It's a little bit different between those two lenses. On Mica lens it's 85 centimeters and on Zeiss bodies it's more like 80 centimeters. Here's the difference, it's not that huge, but keep in mind that at f1.8 you'll get chromatic aberrations on those contrasting edges like white letters on black lens and you have to stop down to at least f2.8, f4 to get the best close-up image quality. On the Zeiss lens, on the other hand, it's pretty good from f1.8. And now the focus breathing test, it's really bad on both lenses, but to be honest, the Mica lens does have less focus breathing. Look at this bar right here, on the minimal focusing distance and on the infinity, we have more of those bars to the left at the Zeiss Baddies. So basically it does have more focus breathing, which is good for Mica, but still it's a bad performance here in terms of focus breathing. And in the real life, as you can see, if the focus hunts a little bit, the whole picture is kind of zooming in and out and in and out. I don't like it for video work. So now let's talk bokeh. Both lenses feature nine bladed apertures. Mm -hmm. Mica lens does give you pretty nice and creamy bokeh during the daylight. It's very round and uh, almost no cat's eye shape. At f2.8 it also looks pretty decent in my opinion, a bit busy, but okay. And now we're at f4, at f4 it looks also pretty nice as well. 
And the Zeiss lens does feature a ton of cat's eye shape and the whole bokeh is kinda swirly. We almost don't see a circular bokeh shapes, only the cat's eye shapes and also it's a bit busier at f2.8 and even at f4 it also shows a bit busier background, more pronounced bokeh balls. If you do want this look of swirly bokeh and a lot of cat's eye shapes, it's good but optically the mica shows better bokeh balls. Mica lens does feature a lot of circular bokeh shapes, a tiny bit of cat's eye shape, but also we can see a pretty pronounced ring around those bokehs. That's the chromatic aberration by the way guys. And here's the Zeiss Batteries bokeh, a ton more cat's eye shapes, but there is no chromatic aberration, so basically no ring around those circles. And now let's have a look at the bokeh balls when we close down the aperture. It looks more circular on Mica lenses till f2.8 it's almost a perfect circle and on the Zeiss lens we do see kind of angles of those bokeh balls more pronounced earlier than on the Michael lens. So overall I think the bokeh looks more pleasing at least to my eye on Michael lens. If it wasn't for chromatic aberrations it would be great. And now let's have a look at the coma smearing. The good news is that both lenses don't have a terrible performance right here, so if you're planning to shoot stars with those lenses, you can definitely try to use f1.8, f2, and as we stop down, we can clearly see some sun stars, but they are much, much more pronounced and better looking on the Zeiss lens. It's not a huge difference, but overall, nice performance in terms of coma smearing as well. And don't forget that f1.8 is a pretty bright aperture, so here it is, ISO 3200, S-Log3, 1 over 50th shutter, f1.8. You can shoot the dark city landscape pretty easily with this lens. So guys, to conclude, of course a $200 lens has drawbacks. This lens specifically struggles with a number of those, like chromatic aberrations, heavy flaring, low contrast wide open, build quality and, let me say, autofocus with surprises occasionally. But you can definitely get away with beautiful images for almost the price of Canon's Nifty 50 lens with this Mica. And if I was to choose this Mica lens plus $1000 or the Zeiss Battis lens, I would go for a Mica lens and some extra cash, because the Battis is pretty old now and also has some nuances like swirly bokeh with a lot of cat's eye shapes in it, heavy focus breathing, the built-in stabilization that doesn't seem to make a difference at all. And overall there is a lot of interest in fast 85mm options on the market right now for reasonable money with very similar performance. And would I recommend this Michael lens? Yes and no. If you're just starting out and you have a full frame camera with a kit lens and the budget is really tight, I would say go ahead and give this Michael lens a try. You'll be amazed what results you're able to achieve, but only if you are aware of those weaknesses and treat it right. But if you have a couple of extra hundreds of bucks, and you want a more sturdy and stable lens to be in your arsenal, the Mica is not for you. So what do you think guys? Is it even worth trying out such cheap gear? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. If you did enjoy this video, please smash the like and subscribe buttons as I say my videos and hit the notifications bell. Here are a couple of videos for you to watch next. My name is Oleg Nikitin, no limits on channel. See you in the next video guys. Take care, bye.